Hey everyone, this is Brandon coming to you with another physics tutorial. Hope that these problems can help you out. As always, I'll be posting a list of all the equations we've learned up to this point on the webpage, along with the questions I'm working to help everyone follow along. Also, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go to the Contact Us page on our website and leave a response, or send us an email directly at bestudios.physics at gmail.com. Now here goes nothing. Number one. For problem number one, we're told that there's an airplane that uniformly accelerates from 66 meters per second to 88 meters per second over 12 seconds. And what we're supposed to find is the displacement or the distance traveled by the airplane. So if we've got our little plane here, and as always, my art sucks. So we've got our little plane here, and at this point, it's going at velocity one, or its velocity, its initial velocity, and over here, it'll be going at its final velocity. So across here, it takes it the change in time to go from this velocity to this one and it's accelerating over that period of time. So to go into the guess method, we have our given, or our givens, which are the initial velocity is 66 meters per second. The final velocity is 88 meters per second. And the change in time is 12 seconds. The unknown for this problem is its change in x or the distance that it travels as it's going at these two different speeds. Now when we get into the equation part of this problem, on the actual problem it says that there are three different methods that you can use to solve this problem. We're only going to cover two of them because the third method is actually going back to the stuff from the previous unit and we don't need to go into that. So what we're going to be doing is using a couple of new equations for this problem. First things first, we're going to use an equation that says the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration, new term for us, times the time. So what we're actually going to have to do is solve for the acceleration. A lot of times as you're working through these problems, the, your best bet is going to be just to look at what you have. And if you can plug all of those values that you have into one equation and just have one value left, then normally you should try to solve for that because you're going to be needing it later in the problem. So with this, if we end up getting to a working equation, we subtract the velocity initial to the other side, and then we also divide both sides by time, we're left with this to find the acceleration. Alrighty, now we're not going to plug in the values just yet, because we've got the other equations that we need to look at. The two other equations that we could possibly use for this our x final is equal to x initial plus the initial velocity times time plus half of the acceleration times time squared. Now that's a mouthful for an equation. The other one that we could potentially use is velocity final squared is equal to velocity initial squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in x. And what we're trying to find in here is the change in x, so it's either there or right there. We'd use either one of these equations. And the thing that you need to look at is in both of these equations, you need to have acceleration. And the only way we can find the acceleration is by using this first equation. So no matter which method you use of these two, you're going to have to go through this equation. Now, what we could do is we could just plug these values in over here 
and make an even more complicated problem or we can just start substituting the values in solve for acceleration and just plug that in when we substitute for these but before we substitute we need to convert these into working equations on the first equation that's simple all we do is subtract the x initial and we're just left with change in x is equal to v initial times time plus one half acceleration times time squared for the other one what we have to do is put velocity final squared minus the velocity initial squared divided by two times the acceleration is equal to the change in x so I subtract this and then divide by that in order to get change in x by itself so now for our substitution we have the final velocity which is 88 meters per second minus 66 meters per second or the initial velocity all of that divided by 12 seconds and so the unit that acceleration is in is meters per second squared and all you're doing with that is you got meters per second and then you're just dividing by seconds and so you end up with two seconds on the bottom or seconds times seconds and you're left with seconds squared so moving on from here if you subtract that it's just 22 meters per second over 12 seconds and that number that it brings us to is 1.83 meters per second squared and that's what our acceleration is and what we can do now is turn around and plug this value into either of these two problems I'm only going to solve for one because it's just plugging in numbers and getting results I just wanted you guys to see how to convert these special equations into the working equations for this problem alright so I'm actually going to choose this equation to work so if our velocity final that's 88 meters per second and all of that is squared minus 66 meters per second and all of that is squared over 2 times 1.83 meters per second squared and so the units that you're going to be looking for in this are meters so all that's going to be happening is when you square this and you square this you end up with meters squared over seconds squared and all of that is over meters over seconds squared so what ends up happening is the seconds squared cancel each other out and when it's just meters squared divided by meters the one on bottom cancels out and the square cancels out and you're just left with plain meters alright and so when you multiply everything out what you're going to be left with is 925.6 now you might be asking yourself why isn't it just 924 meters why is it off by one in a little bit well the only reason for that is when we rounded this from 1.83 repeating to just 1.83 we caused a little bit of a rounding issue because we chopped off part of the fraction on that so what you're going to want to do whenever you're actually working these problems you can write down the um, the rounded number but in your calculator if there is a recall feature where you can save values you're going to want to do that so that your answers are as exact as they can possibly be by the end of the problem your teacher is probably going to be lenient if you're off by one or two because they'll assume a rounding error but don't press your luck always try to save your values when you can uh, if you were to plug in 1.83 repeating into this you would get exactly 924 meters which in this case 
is the solution to this problem. All right, so that was just our quick intro. We covered all three of the equations for this unit and are going to be going more in depth with those in the later problems. All right, so now we're going to move on to question number two. In question number two, we're given this velocity versus time graph and we're asked how far the runner, whose velocity is indicated by this graph, runs in 16 seconds. So here on the x-axis we have seconds and here on the y-axis we have his velocity. Now in the problem it gives us a hint and it says that the area beneath the curve equals the displacement or the area down here underneath the line is the guy's total displacement. Now the thing that I'm going to do is walk you guys through this and actually explain why that is the case as opposed to just multiplying the stuff out which you guys can probably do easily on your own. The whole thing that you need to remember is that velocity is in meters per second and time is in seconds. So if you were to take the X and multiply it by the Y or find the area of these places you would end up with meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancel and what you're left with is just plain meters. Also in this graph the slope of the line is acceleration. If you were to use the standard equation for finding slope which is rise over run the units you would end up with are meters per second over seconds. And through all the division rules what you end up with is meters per second squared as the unit of the acceleration. Alright so that's easy enough once we get the theory behind this we can actually just go through and do the problem really quick. It doesn't ask for the guess method so we can just blow through this. All right. So for this part, we've got 8 meters per second times 2 seconds. And then because it's a triangle, we're going to end up dividing by 2. So that cancels out. And what we're left with is 8 meters for that section. In this part, we have 8 meters per second times 8 seconds because 10 minus 2, 8. Alright? And since it's not a triangle, it's just a rectangle, we leave it at that. And so what we end up with is 64 meters for that area. Now up here we have a 4 by 2 and a 4 by 2 triangle. So what we could end up doing is just 4 meters per second times two seconds so that's eight meters and then have four meters per second times two seconds divided by two or four meters and for the last part all we have is another rectangle so that's four meters per second times four seconds or sixteen meters and when we add all of these up, we have 8 meters plus 64 meters plus 8 meters plus 4 meters plus 16 meters, which should bring us to our answer of 100 meters that the runner has traveled. Alright, so I hope you guys understood the theory and the units behind that. And now we're just going to keep on moving to question number three.